Hello and welcome to my next video on rate of reaction. The rate equals the change in concentration, which is measured in mole per dm cubed, over the change in time, which is measured in seconds, meaning that the unit of rate is mole per dm cubed s minus 1. Right. So drawing a graph of concentration against time, you can see there's a curve and then to work out the rate which is concentration over time you work out the gradient which is the y-axis over the x-axis so change in y over change in x so to work out the rate at any point on the graph you just draw a tangent to it and work out the gradient but more importantly is to work out the initial rate that is when time equals zero now why we measure that is because the second you add the reactions, you'll have the fastest, fastest rate of reaction. Because as the reaction proceeds, few collisions take place per second between the reactant particles, so the rate slows down because the reactants are being used up and the product's being formed. The rate equation. The rate equation says that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to the power of N, times concentration of b to the power of m. Now k is the rate constant, which you work out. The concentration is shown by square brackets of a to the power of n. Now the power of is the order. In a chemical reaction, some particles have an energy greater than the activation energy. It is only these particles that have sufficient energy to react. Now the order with respect to the reactant is basically the effect it has on the rate. So zero order, so you had a to the power of zero, no effect. So you could change the concentration of a, no effect would occur. First order means that if you doubled the rate, uh, double the concentration, you would double the rate. And second order is if, if you double the concentration, the rate times it by four, you square it. So if you times it by three, the concentration, the rate will increase by nine. You can work out the overall order by adding up all the orders of each concentration. So if n was 1 and n was 2, you'd have an overall order of 3. Now, you can then work out k. So if you remember the reaction was rate equals k times a times b. To work out k, it's rate divided by m times b. And then what you do, rate is measured in mole per dm cubed s minus 1. Each concentration is measured in mole per dm cubed. Now if m for example equals 2 and n equals 1 you've then got on the top rate mole per dm cubed s minus 1 over mole per dm cubed squared because a is to order 2 and then mole per dm cubed just 1 because b is to order 1. That means on the top you have a mole per dm cubed on the bottom you have a mole per dm cubed so you can cancel it out leaving s minus 1 on the top, mole per dm cubed squared on the bottom, which means you've then got s minus 1 over mole 2 dm minus 6, and then just to make it look neater, you move the mole, the mole 2 dm minus 6 up, so you change the signs of the powers, mole minus 2 dm6 s minus 1. Graphs. You can use graphs to determine the order of reactions. Two sort you need to know, concentration against time, rate against concentration. Now, in a concentration versus time graph, the concentration will decrease proportionally as time goes on. There'll be a straight line. That's zero for order. That's because as reaction continues, concentration starts decreasing naturally, but it's not having an effect on the reaction. Now the second one is, now the important concept here is what half-life. The half-life of a reactant is the time taken for the concentration of that reactant to reduce by half. So I've shown it on a very small picture here. So every time that the concentration goes by half, the time increases by the same amount. So it could be, you know, 20 seconds. And every 20 seconds the concentration will decrease by half. If there is this constant half-life, that means it is first order. And you have to actually draw it on. Draw at least two. I always draw three, so you have half-life and three. And then finally for second order, 
concentration against time, you'll have a much steeper curve. If you look at it all with half-lives, on zeroth order, the half-life decreases each time. So, zeroth order half-life decreases. That means, let's say, the first half um, of the reactant is gone within 20 seconds the next, then half of that might be gone within 10 seconds. In first order, half-lives are constant. In second order, they increase. So you can see that steep line there. Now, for the first half of the reactant to disappear, it might take five seconds. Then for the half of that to disappear, it might take 20. That's all that means. Then, rate against concentration graphs. Now, for zeroth order, it's just a straight line. The rate does not change with concentration. First order, the range changes proportionally to concentration and for second order the concentration and the rate of length exponentially well by squared and so this is why we use initial rates because here you're looking at the initial rate of reaction that's kind of what we use generally you can equate um, the rate to 1 over time if you need to work it out now the table method for working out orders here you have uh, you just have a few more experiments and a few more reactants but I've just done it to simplify experiment one experiment two you look at the change of the concentrations of one product so here just a has changed from 0 0.001 mole per dm cubed to 0 0.005 mole per dm cubed it's times by five the rate started off at five times ten to the minus three mole per dm cubed s minus one and then it increased to 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2. So that also times by 5. So that means it's first order. So the way you do it is, um, as the concentration of A times is by 5, from 0 0.01, 0 0.001 mole per dm cubed to 0 0.005 mole per dm cubed, the rate also times is by 5 from blah, 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 blah. This shows it is first order. And then you can get the rate equation. So using those two methods, you'll most likely be getting a combination of both one graph and you'll say let's say a is was b is first order you'll then get a table with two compounds in it so you might be able to go a is first order you've already worked out b is first order and c is zeroth order so your overall rate equation could be rate equals k a b both to, both to the one then to work out what k is you put some values from your table in so for example here rate equals k so we can work out what k is because the rate is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 at in experiment 1 k k then equals rate divided by a a at experiment 1 is 0 0.001 so overall the rate would be rate and um, the rate constant the rate the rate constant would be 5 and you just put rate equals 5a and then the units obviously the units here since the overall order is one it means mole per dm cubed s minus one over mole per dm cubed so the the rate constant units are s minus one the rate determining step the rate determining step is the slow step in a in a multi-step reaction now many reactions have more than one step and a slow step becomes an obstacle to the whole process Reactants can become products only as fast as they can get through the slow step. The overall reaction can be no faster than the slow step. So the rate determining step. Now a few few rules here. Now before when we were looking at the rate equation, the powers were just orders. They had no link to the actual equation. Now it does. So you look at the equa overall equation. NO2 plus CO becomes NO plus CO2. Now, the rate equation will have a few different things in the normal one. Here, k rate equals k NO2 squared. Now, what that says is that in the slowest step, there are two molecules of NO2. That's it. If you had um, rate equals k NO21CO2, you'd mean that in the rate determining step, there was one molecule of NO2, two molecules of CO. So that's what the power means, the number of molecules found in the rate determining step. 
Now, you know there will be a rate determining step if the rate equation doesn't equal the reactants in the equation. So, if there was no rate determining step, you expect this reaction to be rate equals K NO2 CO. But it isn't. So that means you have to do two, there must be two steps to the reaction. First step, you write down what you know is in the first step. NO2 plus NO2 because there are two molecules. You then put in the next lot of reactants what's missing. CO. No carbon monoxide was shown, so we know CO is there. Then you look at what is made. Well, one molecule of NO2 must be made because you're using two molecules of NO2, but only one is in the overall equation. So one molecule of NO2 is made. You also know that one molecule of CO2 must be made because there's a molecule in it in the overall reaction and it hasn't appeared in the well, it hasn't appeared yet. The other thing you must know is there must be a molecule of NO, nitrogen oxide. And this must come in the first step. So NO2 plus NO2 becomes NO, and what's left? NO3. NO3 must then be recycled in the next step. And overall, that is your reaction equation. So in conclusion, rate equals concentration over time, worked out by the gradient of a graph. You have the rate equation, which is rate equals K, A to the M, B to the N. You can work out by graphs, looking at rate over concentration and concentration over time. You can also use tables. And many reactions have a rate determining step, which is the slowest step of a reaction. So thank you for watching. As usual, any questions, feel free to ask. And thank you and goodbye.